Hello, thank you for joining the Innovative Leader Podcast. Each week we share thoughts for leaders to equip, inspire, and transform the way we live and work. I am Christy Geiger, Executive Leadership Coach, here with David Phillips, Leadership Consultant. And today we are following up on our podcast from last week on leveraging the next 90 days, sitting here at the end of um, 2020 and coming into Q4. And so we'd like to follow that up and get into the topic of goals, grit, and grind. And a lot of times as leaders, we are in the middle of goals, grit, and grind all the time. And David and I wanted to talk a little bit about the process of goals, grit, and grind and how to just encourage you and to dig into that a little bit more, especially with 2020 having so many ups and downs. Sometimes we come into Q4 and we just want to rest. We want to just kind of um, surf through the end of the year and take it easy and recover. And it feels like we kind of deserve a little bit of rest. However, really, we need to take a deep breath and practice that resilience, set some significant goals as we were talking about last time in the leverage of the next 90 days around how can we leverage this fourth quarter in order to set us up well for 2021 and, and get something significant accomplished in 2020. And so today we're gonna to get into a little bit about goals, about a grit mentality and consistent grind. So David, what are your thoughts on setting challenging goals? What is the difference between just setting a goal to survive, setting a goal to just set a goal? Like what, what really matters? What can leaders do that is really significant for them to expend their time, energy, and effort when they maybe are already tired or their plates are already full? Yeah. So, so the easy thing to do is to set a goal that's, that's um, really easy. Uh, to to uh, to file everything um, by the end of the year. Um, I look at my I look at my email inbox and I've got 3,500 emails. Um, my goal is to to have them all filed by the end of the year. Um, that's that's a pretty simple goal. Uh, you can set up rules and you could probably have it done a lot easier, but a lot a uh, lot sooner than that. Um, and then and then. So, so we, we just, sometimes we set goals to set goals. We set goals that are easy, that, that don't push us and don't challenge us, that don't take us outside of the comfort zone. Other times we set goals that are completely unrealistic. Uh, so I, I want to lose 50 pounds next month. Well, goodness gracious, the things you would have to do to, to achieve that. Um, it's just an, an unrealistic goal. Uh, and so we have to find that, we have to find those goals that, push us beyond what we're, we're already capable of, but not so overwhelming that we give up early. Uh, and that, that becomes a, uh, you know, that's a fine line. And, and, and in many cases, I think every person needs to, uh, it, it's one of those, one of the things I really like about Tim Ferriss is that, uh, especially when, when I read his four hour work week and then, um, his next, uh, book on, um, I can't think of the, the title of it right off the top of my head, but he, he essentially became a, a human guinea pig in that he tried a bunch of stuff. He, uh, he, he set some goals and then he did some things. He analyzed it. He, he tried to understand what was going on. Then he was tweaking it. Then he would come back and um, it, it was a book on health, um, losing weight and some other things like that. And then he would, um, and then he would adjust it and then, to the point that, that he found his sweet spot. Um, and so I think in some cases we, we need to, to, to do a little bit of experimentation on what really is going to challenge us. Um, we, 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 uh, just sometimes, like I said, we just set goals that are just completely unrealistic. So set some things that are going to challenge you. Um, you want to lose, you want to lose weight. Well, set a, a, a two or three, set a, a goal to lose 10 pounds this month or, or in a, or in a month or uh, 15 pounds in a month. I mean, those could be potentially realistic goals. Um, so, so set, set goals that will extend you and push you beyond your comfort zone, but not goals that are so far un, so unrealistic that you want to give up in the first week. And then also goals that aren't so insignificant that there's no reason to, to, 
to even stretch yourself. Um, you know, I, it would be nice to say that that X, Y, and Z is a is a good enough goal um, for everybody, but it it's really not. I mean, I think that's something that that we all have to to think about, or we have to examine our own mentality, our own mental state, uh, our own energy levels, um, and then um, find that find that goal that's going to be um, make a difference in our lives um, that has an, an emotional connection to the things that we want to do, uh, but it's not so overwhelming that we just give up. Yeah. <clears throat> it's good. It's reminding me a little bit about some goals feel heavy. They kind of feel like a burden oh, yeah. in order to achieve. So you set them and you're like, oh man, really? And it just feels like a drudgery, like right almost this obligation or commitment to do something you're not necessarily excited about it it's just something that needs to be done you know kind of how some people feel about this time of the year when they're going through their budget or their whatever right like yeah. that type of the process where it's just like uh, and it's like a goal to get it done but you don't really want to right. and the things that we're talking about I think are things that are meaningful and significant and I believe leaders are thinking about some pretty significant things right now. Back in Q2, we were talking about things that you needed to pivot. How does the organization need to shift? What are the challenges or the risks that we need to take in order to really adapt to what's having, happening with COVID? COVID really is not going away. When we look at the, the, the shift of COVID kind of trickling into 2021 and what that looks like, it is, not going away so right. those adapting it's not about holding your breath like really we needed to adapt and as people have adapted where people have started to work from home some leaders have some tough decisions to make do i sell my business and have every or not sell my business but sell the office and have everybody work from home right. where do we have that common gathering space um, maybe we need to reorg in a different way how are we connecting? How do we accomplish this goal? We used to do in-person sales. We can't do that anymore. Right. How are we going to do that? So some of these goals are looking, they're not just silly random goals right. that we're pulling out of the sky and thinking we're trying to achieve. They're significant goals based on what you have going on in your business and in your life that are critical in order to level up where you're at. Because right now, with COVID and with the different challenges, the games have kind of changed, the cheese has moved. And so we have to adapt. And as we adapt, we're not on the same playing field anymore. If you're used to running on pavement and now you're running at the beach or whatever, the conditions have changed in right. which we're, we're playing the game and striving for, the, for whatever we're doing. And so when we do that, that's really where those goals come from is what do we really need to do? And sometimes we go, oh man, I don't know that I could really reorg the team in the next three months. I don't know that we could really shift those divisions in the next three months. I don't really know that we could make that change in the next three months. Yeah. Well, you can, if you, I still like the BHAGs from way back from the, um, <laughs> what was it called? The, um, you know, good to great. Yeah. From good to great is where the BHAG concept really came out. And I still like that. Like, what is that big, hairy, audacious goal that is going to make a difference? And is it a lot of work? Yes. Is it going to take a lot of effort? Absolutely. Does it take focus and a plan? For sure. But if your goal doesn't take that, is it really worth it? And when you dig into what is this going to do for us? So what in 2020, if we make this shift and we go ahead and close that office space, and we, we adapt so that everybody is working from home. And, oh, wow, look, we can upgrade everyone's computer so that they really actually have a solid home system right. with their double screens. They're going to be more productive because, hmm, we've been having people work from home on their laptop. Ooh, not so efficient. Whatever. Like, you, you actually embrace the changes you need to make. You will level up and upgrade everybody. And to me, that's, that's this challenging goal. Make mm -hmm. the goal so significant that it's going to make a difference and set you up for 2021. And you were saying earlier, I don't know that you said it here in your introduction, but I love the concept of your motivation becomes internal. Right. And so when our motivation is external, that I need to do this because of X, Y, Z out here, 
we come from under the goal. When we are internally motivated because we want it, we see the potential, we see the difference it's gonna make, we're actually coming from on top of our goal. And so we're in charge of the goal. We feel powerful over that goal because we're so compelled to make it happen. And that compelled energy is what's gonna fuel this grit and grind that we're gonna get into in a minute. Yeah, no, absolutely. The, you know, that's the, that, that's the hardest thing is to, to be intrinsically motivated and, and, and not have to rely on those external goals or the, the external forces uh, to, to push you to, the, to those goals. And, and I think that's something that, um, you know, I, as we were talking a little bit before the podcast, you know, it's, it's something I think that comes over time. I, I think that there, there has to be a passion about what, you, what, what that goal is um, and that there has to be um, uh, the desire to get up every morning and set out to achieve that goal. Uh, and so those are, those are, those are huge. Um, if it's not, if it's not, if it doesn't have that emotional tie, um, whether it's scary or whether I don't have a choice in some cases, it's, I don't have a choice. Uh, in some places, some cases it's scary. In some cases it's, um, this is, this is thrilling for me. The challenge is thrilling for me. Um, and, and so that becomes, you know, part of that intrinsic motivation then um then yeah it, so but it really becomes what what is significant to move your your business forward that becomes part of that goal and it's it's that emotional uh connection that intrinsic motivation uh, i think uh, apart from that um we're just we're just relying on pressure um whether it's and, and of course this year has, has brought around some significant pressures um, in regards to, with COVID and remote working and social distancing and, and all those things. And, the, and so you have the, the cultural and, and, and um, cultural pressures that are coming from external, but uh, from outside. But, but uh, the, ideally, we get to that point where it is, it, it is internal. Um, I, I, am, I get up every morning and want a challenge. Uh, I get up every morning and I'm passionate about X, Y, Z. And, and about making X, Y, Z better. And, and uh, so there's a passion about that. And then, and then there's a little bit of, there's a good thing about being nervous and anxious about the potential outcome of that goal, about the, 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 the effect of that goal. What if I sell that business, that sell that, that, uh, uh, that building or, or don't lease that office space anymore. And we do complete remote. And now I have this, I have less overhead. So what does that mean? I can invest over here. I can add this unit. I can do these things. And that puts me in a different, uh, a, a different level of scale. And now I'm, I'm bigger than maybe I'm even comfortable about being. Um, and, or I have more employees than, than I, 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 can I handle that? And so then that, that, that challenge um, um, moves us forward. Uh, and, and we all need, um, even for grit, we all need this, this mentality of, or we need this, this realization that we need goals that are going to stretch us and move us forward. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that are bigger than we are in some cases. Um, and so, yeah, goals are, goals are huge in that regard. Um, you know, I like some of the things you've said, you know, that, that something, what are you willing to fight for? What are you willing to, to dig in and, and, and work hard for. Those are our aspects of our goals and, and we need to have um, activating goals. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe that's a, another, we, sometimes we, we, we go over different things when we talk about um, the podcast and we were trying to figure out what we were going to say about goals. Uh, and so the, but activation goals that are going to activate you and motivate you. Um, and uh so there's, you know, there, there is, uh, there is something interesting, you know, Angela Duckworth has written this book on grit and I really do, re I can't recommend it enough. It's a really good book. Um, it, it's oddly enough entitled grit. Um, my copy is quite dirty, but you can see it there. Um, and, uh, and she talks, so, you know, one of the things that uh, she, she posits in the book is this idea of, um, age and and grit 
And one of the things she says is that, that, that grit is correlates with age. Um, and so one of the, one of the, the questions is, well, was this a generational thing? Uh, 70 year olds uh, who grew up in World War II and, and on the back end of the Great Depression, they just had more grit or is it grit is learned uh, and grit is acquired and grit is um, matured. And uh, so I think that, I think it, that the, the, the more goals we have that push us, that stretch us and that, that move us forward, it, it gives us those wins so that when the winds do, when doesn't happen, we still have um, the grit, the mindset to keep pushing forward. Um, and so age becomes, or the older we get, the more wins we have stacked up, um, hopefully, and uh, the grittier we are. Uh, and so we can, we can move to that gritty mindset uh, to help us continue to, 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 to be in action and to, and to continue to move forward. Mm -hmm. And I think it's interesting and her point about age is really about experience because a lot of our confidence comes from activity and experience and whether it's failing forward, learning forward, whatever it is. And so really it is about that discipline. Like, so kind of moving to the second point, like, first of all, in order to really leverage your 90 days, number one, have challenging goals. Right. As you have those challenging goals, number two is really this grit mentality, which is easier when the goal that you've set, you are excited to achieve and that you have a passion and a fire about it that, that you really are invested in making that happen. Because a goal, in order to really take it from the start to the end, and most people in our habits, some people are great at starting, some people are, they, you know, how long that lasts varies for different people. Right. But most people aren't like, I'm a great finisher. People are not like that. They're yeah. like, I'm a great starter. I'm a great thinker. I'm a great reflector. I'm a great brainstormer. You know, most people aren't like, I am an incredible finisher. So it takes <laughs> grit and, and grind in order to right. get to the finish line. And so with that grit, I think an interesting point about Angela and her book, Grit, and just that the fact of age correlation is the more you have lived life and been disciplined to make something happen. In some situations, maybe you weren't, but in some situations you were. What do we remember? We remember the things that we had to work hard for. Right. We remember, I remember when I played volleyball in college and we had a rappel off from a hundred foot cliff. Why? Because it was really scary to me at that time. And I didn't think I could do it. And it took a lot of grit in my mentality to figure out, oh my goodness, how am I going to do this? Am I going to die? And then to execute it. And so in that grit mentality, we remember those times when we were disciplined. We remember how we became resilient emotionally right. to face our fear and to, to be in that fear and then to overcome it to struggle and fall and struggle and fall and overcome it. And that resilience that we've been through in order to press through the stages, the milestones and the goals to get to that finish line. That is the grit mentality that's required in order to achieve that goal in those 90 days. Yeah. And you got to be disciplined to make it happen because grit and, and I think in some cases resilience or the kind of tie together it, there's consistency over time. What, what I think what, what eventually, what eventually develops into grit <clears throat> and in some cases resilience is this idea of consistency over time. You do the, cons the same things or the consistent things over and over and over again, uh, things that work, things that function, things that, uh, move you forward. And, um, and, and you learn from every one of those, uh, and so maybe you tweak whatever you're doing over time, but you're still doing it over time and you're building up this uh, muscle memory, this habit, this, this, uh, this key. And so, uh, so it is, it's, it's just a mindset of, of, of continuing to push forward regardless of um, what you feel and, and what you're afraid of. Um, mm -hmm. and so when you, when you can do that, you, you build up this emotional, in, in some cases, this physical resilience 
that allows you to keep pushing forward even in the worst uh, in the in the worst of struggles, the worst of times. Yeah, I think that's good, and it really tips us into that third point. So, in order to be in action, you've got your challenging goals, you've got this grit mentality, and the third point is really the consistent grind. Right. And that consistency over time is a grind mentality that I will be consistent, and no matter what I'm doing. 10 minutes of practice a day. I'm doing a 30 minute workout a day, no matter what I'm closing my loop right. um, or whatever it is. <laughs> um, what, whatever that regular activity is, is consistency over time is a decision and a mindset from the grit mentality. But then when we transition into that third point about consistent grind is actually executing that commitment or that decision. And so our consistent grind really requires us to have that plan of what is it going to take? I'm going to need to block an hour a day in order to do this. I'm going to need to block. And where am I blocking that time? Mm -hmm. Don't just say, oh, I'm going to need an hour a day in order to work on this transition. Um, guess what? That hour is going to get eaten up every yep. single day. So unless you block that and protect that time, you're, you have to have that plan. So we have designed habits and rhythms in order to support us. And also, we were talking about that a little bit last week, yeah. just about this designed inner accountability. Even for us as leaders, like we love to talk about leadership. We love to encourage leaders. We love to hear from leaders and what you're learning, what you're curious about. But this podcast is really just a set commitment of a time where we say every week we're meeting at this time to talk right. about what's going on with leadership. And what would be an encouragement that we want to share? What are we learning? What are we noticing? That is just a design structure that we have in our lives around the consistent grind. It, it's not about a marathon or it's not about a sprint. It's really about a marathon. Exactly. It's the regular activity in order to, to play the long game. Yeah. And, you know, and um, back to your point, life is going to get in the way and life is going to ask that hour of you or ask that time of you. Um, and, and so grinding is, is also saying no, or saying not today or saying not now. Um, it is declining in some cases you, you have to, the grind requires you to give up, uh, certain things. Uh, so it's, 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 a uh, in some cases, it's a, uh, in some cases it's a sacrifice. Uh, in other cases, it um, it's just, um, uh, being committed to the goal and committed to, to, and focused on the goal and committed to it so much that other things, um, are not going to be part of your life. Um, mm -hmm. and so, so that's, that's part of this grind mentality. Um, you know, I, I, um, I will not, uh, uh, apologize for being an Alabama football fan. And I will not apologize for being a Nick Saban fan. Um, and people, my, my wife is, is not an Alabama fan. She's a hater, um, as we would say, um, because all they do is win, uh, to, to paraphrase DJ Khaled. Um, but um, people don't like Nick Saban. And, and, and a lot of it, they, they think he is just um, – they think he's arrogant or they think he, he just doesn't care. He has this – but – if you read anything about him and, and you talk to, to about him, and I'm not saying that everybody becomes this way, but he is so focused on a handful of things that he puts everything else aside to, mm -hmm. achieve, to achieve the goals. And he asks his players to do that. And, you know, in, in reaching goals in so many ways is about putting in so many ways, it's about putting aside the insignificant or, or making sacrifices to achieve them um, and to be so focused on them or, or to them that you, you make the, the, you make the choice not to be involved in something else. And um, we, if we're going to have clear goals, we've got to have that grind to say, I am not, I, this is what I'm going to do. And I, until I, until I get there. Um, and that means some, in some cases, um, nights away. It means in some cases, um, you know, doing things that, that 
that you don't necessarily want to do and not doing things that you really want to do. Um, and it is a grind. And sometimes we wake up and we just go, I just don't want to do this or, or life, you know, calls and says, I need you to do, and I need you to do. And, 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 um, sometimes you have to say no to that. Um, uh, now you, you, you know, if you're, if you're, family member is in the hospital that's a different thing but in in most of our lives we we go through we we choose we choose not to say no um and we choose not to grind through some of those tough times uh when we're tired and we're worn out um you know the body gives way ideally we get to our, ourselves in, to a point where the body uh the body wants to give up but the mind pushes us through uh, mm-hmm. and uh and so we, we just have to grind at it day after day, consistently over time. Yeah, I, I think that's very true. And the saying no, I think often, I like to say how sometimes we have goals and then things cut in line and yeah. they're constantly cutting in line. And then the goal got pushed back. The goal got pushed back. Why? Because these things cut in line. And a lot of times we can justify the things that cut in line. Right. But I think that's what you're talking about saying right. no to and recognizing when something is cutting in line and it then is therefore delaying the goal or allowing that hour that was needed to not happen. So saying no is really saying no to distractions, right. saying no to interruptions and being very intentional about your time, which is why we often say your day can run you or you can run your day. Yes. Or Dave Ramsey will say, you can manage your money or you, you know, your money will manage you. Yep. And so it's like, who's in charge here? And a lot of times we make that a negative thing, but really you are in charge of your day and your time and it's how you're going to spend that. And yes, you're right. Sometimes unexpected things happen that it is just what it is. However, often we still can be in choice about our life and about our time. And so when we have that plan in how we're focusing, where we're focusing, how we're executing, we are more likely to be able to execute well rather than the default things of life suddenly consuming. It's, it's the old analogy of putting those rocks in first. Yeah. And if you put the water in and the sand in, amazingly, you literally cannot get those rocks in the jar. But right. if you put your top priorities, those top goals in the jar, you have amazingly enough room for all the sand and all the water, but you have to put the priorities in first. And I think the other thing is, is it really goes back to what we said in the beginning around the why. And if you set a goal without a significant, meaningful reason why this matters, what is this going to do for you? Mm -hmm. Why, when you get this done, what is this doing for you, your business, your company, your team, your organization, the world, those you serve, what is this doing for you? And if you can get really clear on why this matters, it makes it easier to say no. It makes it easier to prioritize, yes, I really want to do that. That is important to me. And this Saturday, I'm going to be doing this because we have this window of time and we're going to get that done. And so your why drives your ability to say no to distractions or interruptions and to really put those rocks in first. Right. And- and the clarity in your communication to others about it all Mm -hmm. um, creates the environment where they don't even ask you in some cases. Mm -hmm. And so, so not only, not only is it just the the goals, the grit and the, and the grind, um, but it is um, the mentality to communicate that to the, to the people in your life to say, this is what's going to happen this is important to me. And in so many cases, if you do that and, and are clear in that, then, then, then you weed out some of those distractions that can come your way. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I like your point about when you've communicated your goals clearly or the goals for the organization, the goals for the team. This is where we're headed. This is what I need to do. What do you need to do to do that? But I love how you communicated the natural ripple effect. When we don't communicate, people naturally interrupt and they're like, hey, can you help me out with this? Versus this isn't about mind reading. This isn't about making other people's decisions for them. But it really is about strategic integration and partnership where if I know this is your goal, I am more naturally wired to support you in accomplishing your goal and not distracting you to accomplish your goal. Right. So 
you can develop that team around you to support you when you've clearly articulated your goal. And that's not just about your selfish goal. That is like your organizational goal right. when everybody is able to line up together in the same direction. That's how we get massive power and strength to accomplish a goal versus when we're all kind of scattered in little circles, we're all struggling with the ability to drive it forward. Right. So I love the goal about, or your point about the importance of articulating that vision clearly, that goal clearly, so that people naturally start to filter some of those distractions and interruptions that they might not even realize they're yeah. throwing in your path, or you might not even realize you're throwing in the path of your team right. um, by having a new idea or a new distraction for them. Like when you articulate it, they articulate it, you're all more likely to execute in a strong way. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, that's one of the reasons, and I've said this um, to others, but that communication is the most important aspect of leadership um, because it, 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 that, that clarity in the communication that allow you to move. Um, so it allows you to achieve the goals that, that you really have in store. Um, and that's, that's part of it because it, it, if you communicate it broadly enough, widely enough, uh, to the people who who know, then that 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 natural filter does begin to occur, um, and 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 it clears the way for you to uh, to be able to achieve those goals. So, yeah, awesome. All right, so leaders, we hope this has been encouraging for you. Really, as you're looking to leverage Q4 of 2020, you're leveraging the next 90 days and how to be in action. And number one, what is that challenging goal? We'd love to see your goal. Go ahead and post it in the comments. What is the, the large challenging BHAG goal that you're working on? Um, what do you do in order to have grit mentality? What keeps you in the game and keeps you getting out of bed? And another thing I was thinking earlier when you were saying that, like you might have to get up an hour earlier than you usually yeah. do. Maybe that's four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, whatever that is. You may need to commit to that, but what are you going to do in order to have the grit and the grind in order to achieve that goal? What is the grind for you? What are you giving up or doing? And then what is the mentality that you need to have in order to be disciplined and have that resilience? Again, we'd love to hear from you what you're doing, what works. And often when you share, you're inspiring somebody else right. and giving them an idea to help them have greater grit and grind in order to achieve their goals. Absolutely. And, and you encourage us as well. Um, and so we would love to, to hear your thoughts um, and, uh, and your comments and um, look forward to doing that uh, uh, on the uh, on YouTube, uh, Apple, um, or wherever you, wherever you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts or Google Play. Um, and we're also, just as a side note, we're also on Amazon Podcasts now. Uh, I don't think I've told you that. And we have an okay. Alexa app. Uh, as well. Uh, so um, those are some other ways to, to get access to the podcast. So anyway, uh, thanks so much for joining. Uh, anything else before we leave, Christy? No, I think it's great. I'm ready for October. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's, uh, it's in the 60s here in Atlanta, and it's a beautiful day outside. I'm, I'm loving this weather. So all right. Uh, awesome. So uh, we'll catch you next time, and I hope you have a great leading week. All right. Take all care. All right. You too. Take care. Bye.